My initial reaction upon seeing the artwork for Marius Titus from uh, Rise was uh, a pretty phenomenal idea, incorporating traditional armor and then making it much more elaborate. Rise's armor is based on uh, armor from the Imperial Roman uh, period from about uh, AD 50 uh, to about AD 100. It consists of the Lorca uh, segmentata of a Corbridge type or almost a Newstead armor found in Scotland. And then the helmet is an Imperial Gallic D helmet. We're uh, making the armor predominantly um, out of steel. It's out of cold rolled steel, um, doing a nice polished finish and uh, actually electrochemically etching uh, a decorative border. And a lot of the pieces of armor have uh, embossing and fluting and stuff going on it. And most of it is covered with a rolled edge of brass just to give it a decorative two-tone effect. This shield is a square shield. Um, it's based on a later period uh, scutum, uh, probably from about uh, 100 AD from Imperial Rome. It's also been reduced in scale. It's only 33 inches long as opposed to about a 48 inch long one that a traditional shield would have. So it, it makes it lighter, more maneuverable. It's kind of derived from uh, more of an art deco kind of feel with the angular lines. Here's a rough view of the eagle that's going on the inside that overlays the aluminum shield that has textured leather over the top of it. All of these little grooves on here get polished out and then in turn uh, plated with 24 karat gold. This is an Imperial Gallic type helmet made out of 16 gauge mild steel. It's all formed up, TIG welded together, Heliarc welded. Here's the cheek pieces that have been polished up. This actually has a three-toned uh, coloration. It's uh, bands of black, bands of polished steel, and the brass. And then there's a crest, a bronze crest with all kinds of detail. It's kind of a Gothic uh, arch motif, almost a Greek meander style. This is the Lorca segmentata or Lorca laminata, the articulated uh, chest plate and uh, shoulders. It's uh, multiple plates. There's actually 12 plates that cover the torso and uh, numerous plates that overlap over the shoulders. This allows a lot of flexibility and movement. This is one of the shoulder plates with the brass trim that's been polished. That'll sit up in here on the shoulder. The styling, which is these repeated arches coming through here, which is, you know, kind of a gothic arch. This is a uh, van brace, which covers the forearm. There's also leather comes off of the front here. Uh, this is uh, part of the uh, Roman military belt, the Singulum uh, Militaris. So uh, this all has all kinds of studding coming around it. This is uh, gold leather. There's five panels on the front and five panels on the back with all kinds of decorative metalwork. I'm making a, a gladius, a fairly long gladius. It's almost a spatha length. The spatha is a cavalry sword. So from horseback, they could take the longer weapon and hit with it. Now, the weapon I'm making for the video game is made out of an aluminum alloy for the blade with pierced out aluminum uh, decorative kind of leaves on the, uh, the top section. I've machined, milled out the hilt out of a solid uh, billet of brass. The grip is made out of uh, canary wood. It's an interesting wood. And they were cutting chevrons into it and setting brass into it. And then the pommel is a piece of steel that we've turned and ground to shape that'll have a, a brass disc in the center for the decorative element. As you can see, it's a rough ground aluminum blade that flares to a wider point at the tip and then coming in for stabbing. This is how it looks in the rough form. And uh, this is actually uh, used in the Legio 14 Gemini Legion. So uh, this will be uh, electrochemically etched down the blade right through here on both sides with those markings. The Gladius sword is based on uh, a Manser Fulham type sword, which is an earlier period sword with a wider kind of flaring tip. Made that sword almost the same length as the shield to give them more range when they're stabbing.